Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to skip reading a miracle from here because we just talked about the miracle in our midst. Not in 1904, but in 2017. A mighty miracle. Many miracles. Peter's miracle. Terry Young's miracle. So many miracles. Who's gotten a, who's received a miracle this year? Raise your hand. It's amazing. Look around. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, everyone. It's an amazing thing. Today I wore this. It's boot camp. Training you all to be the special forces. Hearing God. Doing what he says to do. Go getting the harvest. Using your gift to go touch someone's life. It's what it's all about. We just can't. We don't do church as usual. But the Lord's always calling us up higher. And the up higher is to go out further. And, and not to, to this beautiful presence that we have every time we gather together. To be stingy with it. It is a sin. But to go and compel them to come. That they will be healed like Jason. And like others, like Alita. That's been healed in her heart. And so many that have been paralyzed from hurt and pain and trauma being released. To where they're on fire in the Philippines. On fire in the Philippines. Setting the Philippines on fire with your a testimony, Alita. Today, the topic is, and this is all about getting rid of us and flesh, coming back to him that we can hear clearly the voice of God and being the spirit being empowered with his fire and dunamis glory soldiers in the special forces. So today it's about returning to his heart. Returning to the heart of God. And it's so awesome during pre-service prayer. Jerry basically was praying my sermon. And I go, "Wow, he just prayed it, preached it, prophesied it, word for word even scriptures." So the Lord is saying something. And uh, who's hungry in here and thirsty? Now put your hands down. And when we're done with this, then the question is going to be, are you really? Are we really hungry and thirsty? We may think we are. But are we really hungry and thirsty for the things of God? We saw hunger like we haven't ever seen before in the Philippines. Is that right, team, that went? When you walk up and don't do anything and the whole place falls out screaming and getting delivered and getting healed and crying out for God and repenting, wow, that's a good, that's hunger. That's hunger. Luke 6, 21, blessed are you. You're blessed for being hungry. You're blessed according to the word of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. You shall be filled. See, God doesn't just say, okay, hunger after me, hunger after me. He always responds, right? It moves his heart to see the love of his children. And it says that he will fill us. Hunger here means to be famished. I am famished for you, God. Who here is going to be doing the fast with us in January? You know, however long, the whole month. Everybody's got the hand up, almost everybody. And Pastor David, he does the whole month. He won't say that, but he does the whole month without food. And he does it. He's done it for years and years. And God strengthened. I keep asking, aren't you hungry? Aren't you hungry? Aren't you hungry? And every time, no. His hunger goes. 
And let me tell you, that's a miraculous thing because when he's not fasting, you know, he's always hungry. (laughs) So it's an amazing thing. We want you all to join us and then to join with the daily read to get you in the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. Uh, But it means to be famished. It means to crave. I crave the presence of God. Who here has been an addict? Raise your hand. There's a lot. There's a lot of you. There's a lot of ex-addicts. You're delivered. You're recovered. You're delivered forever. All right. Right. And you would crave, right, for alcohol or drugs or your next hit. You would crave. You. That's all you could think. Your cigarette. You crave for your cigarette. Whatever. Craving like that for the presence of God. Craving, craving where you couldn't wait for your next cigarette. I can hardly wait to get into the presence of God. I need my Holy Ghost fix. I need to be fixed today by Jesus. I can hardly wait to drive, go fly into his presence and bask in his miracle power and his love. And it also means to pine. And pine means to yearn intensely and persistently. Languishing. Are we really hungry? I think we need some hunger help. I believe in today, and we're doing this first so we go into praise and worship. That you do whatever it takes. To reach back to the heart chambers of God. Now you reside there. Nothing changes that. Right? But to have the hunger where nothing else in your life will satisfy you but him. Somebody gave the word about idolatry. Was that you? About idolatry, money being on. What is standing in our way of this kind of hunger? It says we're going to be filled if we have this kind of hunger. That means to gorge, supply food in abundance. That means it's that heart-to-heart connection with God. This is vital to hearing him. If our love relationship is off here, it's going to be off with everyone around us, and it's going to affect our hearing ability to hear him. This is all a precursor of hearing God and going and flowing in the gifts of the spirit. If this is wrong here, then we can have a prophetic gift and we start swinging that sword. We'll kill people with it. But if we will get to the places Jesus was that we only do what father says to do and we only speak what we see father speaking, we will win a world and we will see billions come into the kingdom of God. It's about dying to who we're not. It's about taking our soul and telling it who's in control. It's the spirit. It's about telling our mind, will, and emotions to shut up and to submit to the will and purposes of the Most High God. And we're going to get into it as, as we progress about the soul and about how we are spirit. And our soul can be our best friend. It was created by God instead of our worst enemy. Conjoining together spirit, soul, and body were triune. Filled. Who wants to be given a supply of food in abundance? So that connection, wham, here it comes. That's what Jason, every single Sunday, he would have... People help him up to the front. It was like the woman with the issue. He would he would come labored walking with people helping him up to the front to worship God every single time. And then all of a sudden, God whammed him. He just couldn't help it. The balls of heaven, the good, good God. He went, whoa. 
He just fed him in abundance. Because he worshipped him in abundance. God went, oh, I just can't help it. Here it is. It overflowed in heaven. And Mary Lou starts screaming. I would too. And crying, my son can see. My son can see. That heart-to-heart relationship that I watch Jason demonstrate before the Lord every Sunday. It is a humbling thing. And it provokes me to want more and to give more to him, to the Lord Jesus, for he is worthy. Yes. Now. Not later. Those who hunger now. Don't wait. It might be too late. Hunger now. When I say too late, your relationship with God is vital to harvest. People are watching us and observing us. Are we loving? Are we reflecting the heart of Jesus? Or are we wanting our way? Do we get all upset because we don't get to be seen or heard or whatever it is? And then we start. I've got rights. No, we don't. We're dead. Dead Dead right. Dead rights. That's right. Praise God. I'm going to have to see law that. All right. Matthew 5, 6. Let's turn there. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Thirst there means to suffer thirst. Now listen to this. To painfully feel their want of and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. That's one of the Greek translations. Are you thirsty, really? Are you absolutely suffering thirst? Are you painfully feeling the want of him and eagerly longing for him? Those things by which my soul, your soul, needs to be refreshed, supported, and strengthened. Are we really thirsty? Are we really hungry? Or is it the religious thing to do? Or to look like? Filled there means to fulfill and satisfy the desire of anyone. This is our God. Thirst after me and I will fulfill and satisfy the desire of everyone. Isn't that cool? Who wants that? Yes, God. Holy Spirit, do what you have to do in us to get us there. Oh, God. Sometimes we think we've arrived. I tell you, we have not come close to arriving. We've got a drop in the bucket of arriving anywhere. Right? It's a drop in the bucket. Psalms 42. This Psalms, they don't really have a definitive that it was King David, Psalmist David, but it's pretty sure that it was him that wrote it. And it was probably during (laughs) the persecution of Saul, that precious brother, tried to kill King David, or Absalom's rebellion, his precious son. Think of that. Your son rebels and tries to kill you. As the deer pants for the water brooks. God. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul. What's the soul? For you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God. Now, he's in the midst of turmoil. He's being hunted probably, by either his son or Saul. Whom shall I come and appear before God? My tears have 
have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where's your God? See, that's the whole strategy of the enemy. The whole strategy of the enemy is to hit you with circumstance after circumstance after circumstance after circumstance. So you will find your place here. You you will find yourself in a place where you hear voices speaking. Where's your God now? If he really loved you like he loves Leanne. How come you're going through what you're going through? He favors Leanne. That's right. You should. We're all his favorite. That's good. Good. You would have thought we practiced that, didn't we? Woo. Oh, yes. Oh, who do you think you are? You're not qualified. Is it fun to know who you are after last week? Who we are? So when the enemy comes and tells you that stuff, you go, shut up. I am God's favorite. I am, what else? Who else are you, Joseph? I am what? I'm beloved. See, I'm more than a, see, that's your weapons of war. When those voices that came to David that said, Wow, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. And I went to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. So he's recalling the good things. Then he looks at himself. I don't think they had a mirror, but maybe in the reflection in the pond. And he looked down and he said, What's your problem? Why are you so so downcast? Oh, my mind, will, and emotions. And why are you disquieted within me? And he spoke to his soul and he said, get it together. Hope in God. What's the matter? Look at you went and did all these wonderful things. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Oh, my God, he said, my soul is cast down within me. He went from one extreme, and then he went, how many can relate? Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mazar. I love this part. Deep calls unto deep. Every time I read this and I study this, there's more in depth. He gives me more revelation. Deep cries unto deep. At the noise of your waterfalls, all your waves and billows have gone over me. In the Hebrew, deep is our Father God speaking to the depths of our soul. Call right there means to summon to invite, to call for, to call and commission to a point. In the middle of his despairing, God is commissioning us. In the midst of our stuff, he's calling to the deep places in us. He's going past all of this stuff. He's going past all of us. And he looks in, he sees who he created you to be, and he speaks directly to that person and says, I've appointed you. I have called you. I am calling you up and out. I have put you in a full-time ministry. I am giving you promotion at your job. He begins to speak to the persona. You're an awesome warrior in me. He calls us up, upgrade, up and out. He doesn't throw us under the bus. He calls us up and out, and we should do the same. When we see one another stumbling, we don't kick them when they're down. We call people up and out. Always upgrading people, right? Just like our father. He's the example. It says he he went, and the definition, it also means to a cost. You know, that's love. To approach us and speak to us often. 
in a challenging and aggressive way. Listen here, Amelia. You awesome warrior. You are going to make it big in my kingdom. You are coming up and out. You have a harvest before you. And you will influence many young people. Wait till you see what I have in store for you, says your God. That's, that was a word from God. And that is a costing. He's not there beating us up. He's there saying, come on. Come on, stop it. Get over yourself. Crucify your flesh. Get over it. It's not about you. Let me be who I want to be in you. It's so easy to be offended. We could be, I tell you, Dave and I could be offended every day, seriously. Pastor Rush, you can, you guys, we could be right. I mean, you could be, everyone's got their opinions. Everybody's got their suggestions. Everybody tells you what you're not doing. And you can absolutely be offended. We can't afford to be offended. Sometimes in a weak moment, I might bite on it. But then David comes in and he goes, stop it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. But our father, he gets in the middle of us because he loves us. And he's wooing us back to his heart. He's saying, come on. Come on, there's more. Come on. Come on, thirst and hunger for me more. Thirst, get rid of that idol. Get rid of that offense. Get rid of that anger. Get rid of that resentment. Come on, I'm waiting. I'm right here. I haven't gone anywhere. He's beckoning us to come into those deep places. The noise there. And it says, and the noise of your waterfalls. That's his voice. His voice. We become deaf by spiritual wax buildup from the enemy. Where we become deaf into his voice because the other voices are so much louder. Of hurt and trauma and victimization. And while all the time God hasn't gone anywhere and he hasn't stopped speaking. We've stopped listening. We've turned a deaf ear to his voice. It's always, always the waterfall. Always, always flowing over us. He's always there through dream. He'll try a dream. He goes, well, they're not listening. How about a dream? We get up and we don't write it down. We forget it. Or we go, oh, that wasn't God, you know, because he would never talk to me like that because I'm just, you know, I'm unworthy. You know, shut up. And let him talk. It could be John Moore who walks up to you and says, you know what, the Lord put this on my heart for you. And all of a sudden you turn around and you go, well, that was good for someone else, but he must have missed it. You hear what I'm saying? This has to die. You are mighty women of God and and men of God. Next week, or not next week, the week after, Eric, we're going to show that. Philippines. That you took the pictures of the Philippines and the team out there like a a Delta Force secret agents that went in and out in these unmarked vans with black windows. And we'd go in. We'd love them to death. They would die. Their flesh would die. The love of God would kill the flesh. They'd come up a new creation in Christ Jesus. And then we'd be on to the next one. Right? It's awesome. And yesterday, a week before Christmas, all these people show up in a parking lot. Excited to not get Christmas, but to give Jesus out. That is death to flesh. How many of you on the team, when you woke up, you wanted to sleep in? Raise your hand. How many of you were sick, actually physically sick? Some of you were. I knew Lee was. She kicked the devil in the teeth, and she was desperately sick. And what happened? You felt better, didn't you? Yeah, see? As soon as she got to Idaho Springs, it lifted. That's Delta Special Forces kick devil butt stuff. That's what that is. That's what it is. It's having an on fire passion for Jesus. That it's so overwhelming. You can't help but tell people what God has done for you. Overwhelming. And his waterfalls. Listen to this. Waterfalls. 
is water spout, and it's a conduit, a channel. In other words, a heart-to-heart channel. I call it a portal. A heart-to-heart portal channel right from God's heart to my heart that he speaks to me through. That is what reality is. He's constantly speaking heart-to-heart to us. He's constantly speaking spirit to spirit. He's constantly speaking to our mind, will, and emotions that are submitted to hearing him. That is the key. That is the key. And billows, I love this in the Hebrew. It means, one of the meanings of billows, washing over them. Your waves, that means breaker. We're getting breakthrough. He's breaking in. Breakers. Breakers. Billows is used in ratifying a covenant. To make it officially valid, endorse and confirm. So he's speaking deep to us. He's accosting us. He's direct. He's encouraging us. He's exhorting us. He's telling us to get our acts together. And then his waves and his covenant is washing over us and washing over us, reminding us who we are, reminding us who we are as the redeemed. Amen? Wow, that's something to get excited about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why, here we go, have you forgotten me? He's going back from soul, unsanctified soul. Because soul is not a bad thing. But if it's unsanctified, it is. It's your enemy. But he's, he's going back from his mind, will, emotion. Oh, my God. They're going to kill me. Oh, my gosh. What have I done? Oh, I've loved you so much. And then, then over here to say, oh, why are you down? Get it together. Shut up, soul. Line up with the truth. Come into right alignment and right order. Because I will hope in God. And it happens just like this. That transition from soul that's unsanctified. And I hate everybody. Everybody's bad. Wait a minute. Shut up. Hope in God. Hallelujah. That quick. You flip in and out of spirit and soul. We need to stay in our spirit, man. Be led by the spirit of God all the time and tell our soul who's boss. Right? We get offended. Somebody says something that hurt our feelings, and we want to quit everything. We've seen people leave the church because they were all oh, so and so said this about me, and so instead of getting it reconciled, they both leave the church. Oh my goodness! And most of them are still wandering. Wow! How can God bring a harvest into the body of Christ right now when we're dysfunctional? Will He bring dysfunction into a dysfunctional body to hurt them too? That's why we're getting all the stuff pruned out, all the stuff taken out, because you are moms and dads of the next harvest, and you are going to be ministering to the very hearts of the next harvest that's coming in. Isn't that exciting? Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you disquiet within me? Hope in God, for I yet will praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Isn't that good news? That even him, even King David, had his moments with his soul. But he won. Our longings, oh, our longings reveal much about our priorities. They reveal the place God truly holds in our hearts and minds. What are we longing for? What are we longing for? What are our longings? Holy Spirit, shine your light on the truth. We command truth revealed. Everyone close your eyes. We command truth revealed right now. Right now, Lord God, truth revealed. We command truth revealed. Everything hidden in the area of our longings up to the light. The good, bad, and ugly. 
we can deal with truth because the truth will set us free. Show us. Show us, Lord. Unhealthy longings, idolatrous longings, show us. And I tell you, the first voice, you know, he's always the first voice. And then the second voice is logic and reason telling you, ah, don't worry about it. So-and-so is worse than you. Right? The first thing you heard, that's God. So, Lord God, we lift that up. Lift your hand up. Take that thing that he showed you. And say this, Lord God, I cast this on you. I will no longer carry this. I will no longer idolize this. It's what's standing between me and you. From a deeper place of relationship. Have it. And have your way in me. Amen. How many of you heard something? Raise your hand. You heard God showed you what it was. I'm not going to ask you what it was, so don't worry. Good. Guess what? You heard God. We're going to practice hearing the voice of God in these boot camps. We are thirsty for the Lord, but we have forgotten how to drink from the wells of his extravagance. Revelation 2.1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. I just love how God sets us up. He gives us all the good things, which we need to learn from that when we're correcting someone. You know, really? We need to learn from this and, and, and learn how to approach people in a time of correction, whether it's your children or people, your friends, and, and, and talk about all the good things because we said to somebody, I don't know, probably a month ago, you know, okay, we, we get, okay, wow, okay. And then we said, have we done anything good? Has there been anything good? Sometimes we get the enemy builds a case, and all you see is the bad, 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 bad. But not too long ago, you were praising God for all the good things. And we forget it because the enemy builds his case against one another. But he says this, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you've fallen. Repent. It, it's, it's not this big, long, laborious. It's repent. It's a six-letter word. Repent. And do the first works. Or else I will come quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. It's that quick. God, oh boy, forgive me, Lord. Oh, wow, forgive me, Lord. Oh, whoa, forgive me, Lord. But see, what's happened is we've become desensitized to conviction. We've, we've hardened our heart to conviction. And all of a sudden, we're, it is a very bad thing. Because our heart becomes hardened. And it's everybody else's problem, or it's that person's problem, or it's my past problem. And listen, to that. if we will just own, in other words, recognize, not own, recognize that we probably had something to do with this, and say, Father, forgive me. That quick, Father, forgive me. Whoa! He's not going, bleed for me. You need to bleed. You need to bleed. No, you, he bled for us. He's not requiring our blood. And sometimes one another, we require blood. You repent of something, you ask for that, and they keep hammering and hammering. And you go, here, let me get a knife and cut myself. 
Just let it go, people. It's not worth it. (laughs) So left, you've left your first love. It means to depart, to give up, to give up on, expire, disregard, neglect. We've neglected him. We've left him. And it, the first love means foremost in time, place, and order of importance. We say, oh, God, you're first. Is he? Is he in everything? Are we really hungry? Well, we saw those definitions. Are we really thirsty? Well, we saw that too. Is he really first and foremost in everything in our lives? Boy, it's quiet. How is it back there in Facebook land? Is it quiet in your house? How about in live streaming? Are you getting the shakes? You've left your first love. Agape means love feast. You've left your love feast. Oh, you love Jesus. But that feast... That overwhelming banquet, that overwhelming abundance of love that he is sending, but we've got umbrellas up all over the place. Well, I'm too busy. Boop. Oh, do you know what time it is? I got to go now. You know, I don't really want to go today for that or this or that. Oh, you know, they're going to gather together and worship God, but I don't have time. Whoop, there goes an umbrella. And love is coming. This abundance of love. This love is coming down. Well, I really don't have time to spend. I'll give you five minutes today, God. And he's going like this. And a drip. Because that's all you did. Boom. An umbrella came up. Time ruled. Time is a God. That just hit me. That's right hot from the Holy Ghost fire. Time is a God. Wow, that's amazing. It says, remember, that means to rehearse. Rehearse like David did. Rehearse from where you first came. Rehearse the good thing. Rehearse all the blessing, all of the loving, kind gestures that Jesus has done. Remember and rehearse the cross. Rehearse what he did on the cross. Rehearse the resurrection. Rehearse the healing of Jason. Rehearse your healings. Rehearse the good things. Rehearse. Rehearse from where you came from. Rehearse the first moment that you came to Christ. And like a child, you were looking in the clouds and seeing angels. And all of a sudden, you became institutionalized and constipated. You need to take your x lax and you need to once again rehearse and remember being a child and being passionately in love with your God. It said, where you have fallen from. It said, from where, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Fallen, wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear this. Descent from high place to a lower place. Cast down from a state of prosperity. As an act of our will, our soul, our spirit is seated where? Our entire triune being is seated, should be. That's the goal. Get everything caught up. But what happens is our soul brings us down, brings us down, brings us down, brings us down. The unsanctified soul from that high place said, lighten the ship. That's what do. D-O. Do the things that you did. It means lighten the ship. Get rid of the idols. Get rid of the idols. Lighten the weight and the burdens of your soul. Get your hearts free. The brokenness and the fractures and the trauma. Lighten the baggage. Lighten it. When you came to Jesus, hoo, 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 and then all of a sudden the enemy goes, no, oh, oh, he tries to get you this way and that. And instead of going quickly casting their cares on the Lord, by the time we end up casting, you know, as a boulder that it takes, you know, a whole army of intercessors in the church to help you launch out into the deep. Right? It starts out this tiny little thing and we just go, here it is, God. But we keep, 
And you keep, because we're desensitized. Instead of saying, forgive me, God, forgive me, God. We just keep it up. We keep it up and we get desensitized and hard and hard. And by the time we get you, <laughs> takes us several sessions to get it all out. It's a pebble in the shoe as it begins, but it, yes, it becomes a boulder on our back. Very good, Jan. And that's absolutely what happens. It's what happens. So how do we return to him? It's really pretty simple. It's what we just said. Do you remember when you first found Christ? Do you remember the good things, instead of having a list of all the failures of everyone and your own failures, why don't you start looking and seeing the good and start making a list of all the good? I'm speaking to me. List the good. List the good. You know, speak out the good and say, wow, that's good. Woo, that was awesome. Wow, did you see when you did this? Wow, you're not so bad. Wow, that person came to Jesus. You know, I'm not so bad. Wow, yeah. And I tell you what, Jesus, you're awesome. Look what you did for me. That's what you do. And here's the biggest key. From the foundation of the world, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have demonstrated relationship and family. We saw this last week in the very first three words, in the beginning. And how in, when, you Hebra when you translate that out in the Hebrew, it's the whole plan of salvation. And the very first letter is in the shape of a house. God is a relational God. Right, Judy? He is relational. He loves family. He wants to have heart to heart with us. Father's design and desire is for love motivated relationship with his children. Busyness, laziness, distractions, among other things, have pushed precious communion with God to the bottom of our priority list. And as a result, our lives as well as the lives of our families have suffered. The world has become so technologically savvy. We have unfriended God from our Facebook. Or should we say, from our face-to-face, -face, without even realizing we've done it. Without even realizing we've done it. Repentance, 1 John 1, 5 through 10. This is the message which we have heard from him. Worship team, come on up. And declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Now, that's pretty acoustic speaking. And do not pro, uh, practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar. Oh, I don't sin. And his word's not in us. Psalms 51.10. We want to reach the lost, don't we? We want to reach those that don't know Christ. It's a passion on Michael's heart. He's an evangelist. I tell you, it's on all of our hearts. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew, or it means rebuild, a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from, from me. Restore to me the do joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. All right, all of those things created me a clean heart. Now, heart there is what? What's heart, soul, mind, will, emotions? The centermost part of our being. It's not talking about our literal heart. It's talking when you translate it out. It's the centermost part of your being, your mind, will, and emotions. Create in me, your spirit is washed in the blood. Create in me a clean mind, will, and emotions. That's the battlefield right there. And renew, rebuild, all of that. Then it says, look in this next verse. Then, say then. I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you what's first 
Mind, will, emotions, clean, prepare. But now, does that mean you can't go talk to somebody about Jesus if you're still a mess? No. But if you really, truly want to see the fullness of the Godhead moving through you in power, in dunamis, miracle-working power, you get the horse, the cart, the horse before the cart instead of the other way around. Where you're going out beating the streets, beating the streets, beating up people, telling them, you know, God, sinner, do you know you're going to hell? Because you're led by an unsanctified mind, will, and emotion by the flesh and not by the spirit. Because it says here, when we get this all done clean, and uh, then I will teach transgressors your ways. Isn't that awesome? Wow. It makes me want to go take a bath in the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Create there. Create in me. It means to form. This is what else it means. To cut out or cut down. Cut it out, Lord. Not cut it out. Like quit it. Cut it out. Restore to me. To bring back. To allow. To put back together again. Isn't that cool? To replenish. And then it says, let's go on in the verse, because it says, to show forth thy praise. Because this is what we're going to do. This is so important. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. Listen to this. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. That means one that's bowed down to the kingship of Lord Jesus. A broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Amen? I'm going to tell a story about repentance and those that have been in boot camp have heard this before and we've talked about you know when we were in the Philippines this time and, and just how people would fall out and they would be on their knees men would be shaking saying forgive me God forgive me God forgive me God in fact Thailand the first time we went it was so awesome the presence of God and these pastors were sitting out in that auditorium and they were shaking and they were holding them. Forgive me, God, I repent. Oh, God, forgive me. The power is released in repentance. It's a powerful missing thing. There's churches that say it's no longer about the cross. We're past the cross, all this. Let me tell you, it is the cross. What Jesus did on the cross to be reminded of the price paid and who we are because of that cross. And, but we, a friend and I, we, we went to a, this is years and years and years ago. And, and she, we, we taught at the little Christian school that Crystal and, and Lindsay, Pastor Crystal and Lindsay went to. And it's hard to say, Pat, she's my baby. So Pastor Crystal. And, and they were little. I think you were in third grade. And the topic was hearing the voice of God. And she was teaching on the voice of God, and I was doing worship. And, and I said, uh, I said, oh, God, <laughs> there's 150 children from ages kindergarten up to sixth grade. And so I said to her, I said, now, last year they had the candy man. He gave candy out. And I said, do you think we should go buy some Hershey bars and hand them out to everybody? I said, what do we do with all these kids? And she said, I don't know, but God's going to show up. And so we got there. And, and I began to just begin to play on the guitar. And I did that fun song, Spring Up a Well, that I love to do with kids. And they went wild and all this. And then all of a sudden, I just stopped playing. And just like that, there was a holy hush. 150 little ones just... <laughs> no 
No one saying a word. No one provoking anything. Crying began to break out all over the house, all over the building. Crying from everywhere. And a tongues came through. Actually, before the crying hit, tongues came out of a little girl. And I looked, and it was my baby giving her first tongues. And then an interpretation from somebody. We didn't say who has the interpretation. I mean, it was just spontaneous of the Lord. And that's when it broke. And the crying began everywhere. And little kids, nobody telling them to do this. I looked at the girl and I said, what do we do? She said, we don't do anything. And we sat down and for two and a half hours, we watched the most glorious repentance from little children demonstrating what it looks like. We've never seen anything like it since. And these little babies came up and they were on the ground and they were the parents that were there supervising, you know, they were sort of freaking out. Remember that? Because some of the boys, they were going into travail. They were little kids that don't know any of this. They were going, ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And their parents would hold them like this. It was all over the place. Little kids going up to other kids and wiping the tears and saying, Please forgive me for the bad things that I've said about you. I didn't mean it. I love you. Please forgive me. And then they do it. To, it went on two and a half hours. A sovereign love feast of Jesus. And then, wham, visions. The supernatural opened up to these children. Visions. I see this. There's angels there. Oh, Mrs. Thompson, do you see that angel right there? And I look, I go, no, but if you see it, it's there. I mean, they were seeing awesome supernatural encounters. That's repentance. Unprovoked. Not manipulated. Not stirred. Oh, shadaratata mashota ratata da bashota. Not stirred up and manufactured. Proverbs 8 17 says, Those who seek me will find me. Jeremiah 29 11. You all know this, but listen to this. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. He is not planning your destruction. God is not planning your demise. God loves you. He says he has a plan and a purpose for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. That's how much Papa loves you, sister. That's how much he loves us. A future and a hope. That's our God. And you will seek me and you won't find me. No. You seek me because he's already there. He's there. He's got a big smile on his face. And you just go, God, bam! Jesus. Jesus, bam! Holy Spirit, bam! He's there that quick. He's there that quick. When you search for me, with your whole heart, mind, will, emotions, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I'm driven you. That means all of those broken places. He's going to gather all the broken places. He's going to gather all parts of your soul, all your heart together. He will do it as we seek him, as we passionately desire him. He will set us free out of captivity. Amen? Father God, we right now renounce and reject and break off all cultural and religious mindsets that keep us bound from showing and releasing our hunger. Oh, Father God.
We bind that off. And Lord Jesus, as we enter into worship now, Lord God, we abandonly throw ourselves at the altar. Father God, as we come into praise and we show forth our praises, as we show forth our praise, it doesn't say not show forth. I mean, showing forth is demonstrative. It's a verb. It's an action verb. It's showing forth. Exuberance because it's a weapon of war. And as we fall on our faces in worship before you, God, we expect we know, we know, like if we were pregnant and we know we're going to deliver, we know we will encounter you in a powerful way. <laughs>